today. Although we're not able to physically be together, we want to let you know of a few ways that we're connecting with your whole family online. Miss Erica has some inspiring devotionals for all of the iKids, and you will find those on either YouTube or Facebook. Just do a search for Ignite Kids on either Facebook or YouTube, and if you subscribe, you'll get notifications when she makes a new post. Also, all the youth are connecting on Friday nights via video conferencing. So if you're interested in joining the conversation, contact Pastor Nick through the church office. And while there is some distance between us, we want you to know we care about you and we are here for you. And if you have a need, please let us know. Perhaps you need transportation to a medical appointment, or maybe you can't get out and you need something delivered to you. We have people that want to help you. We also have a well-stocked food pantry. So if you have a need or you have a family member or neighbor that has need, please just call the church office and ask for the food pantry administrator. And we just want to thank you so much for your faithful giving at this time. It's your giving that makes all these outreaches and ministries possible. There are four different ways that you can give. First of all, online through the church website, which is SCC spokane.org slash giving or you can text your donation to 509-242-7406 there's also a QR code that's going to come up on your screen and you can take your cell phone open your camera and just scan that code it'll take you right to the church's website where you can make your donation and of course you can always mail your tither offering to the church or drop it by during regular church hours we just want you to know we appreciate you so much. And now back to Pastor Rick. Well, we want to greet everybody this morning. Thank you for letting us come into your home. We know that these times are, are different, but you know, the enemy can't stop the church from moving on. Wonderful uh, aspect of technology. And we've got a lot of things today, but in our future, that it may be for a little bit that we're involved with the online, with the web page and, and things. But know for certain that we're, we've been praying for this Easter to be super, to be special, to be profound. We believe that the Holy Spirit's going to come into your home and you're going to have a witness in your heart. We don't want to just know intellectually. We need to know the Lord by the Spirit. So thank you for letting us come in today. I just want to remind you that today, today is Resurrection Sunday. Yes, it is. And I want you to know that through this resurrection, through Jesus' resurrection, we have living hope. Yes, to me, is. that is encouraging. And you know, that living hope should anchor you through these difficult times of life. I want to read to you out of a scripture verse. It's found in Romans 15, 13. And it says this, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it says in another translation that you may abound in hope. But the best translation in this scripture for me, it reads out of the Passion Translation, it reads it this way. Now may God, the inspiration the fountain of hope fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. And it goes on to say, and may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his super abundance until you radiate with hope. Wow, let's celebrate today his living hope. I believe that you are a hope carrier. Everywhere yeah. you go, yes, you are right. spreading the yeah. hope of God. Yeah. Happy Easter. Our hope should be contagious. The life of God should be contagious everywhere we are. Our cup should be full and overflowing. It's not automatic. You stir up the gift that's within you. That's what Paul told Timothy. You know, the enemy's always working. The Bible calls it the wiles or the strategies of the enemy. And he's always doing things. I believe part of what he's doing is this separation. You know, we're, we have an empty auditorium here. Uh, just the, the, the people, as are, you know, uh, 
uh, were isolated. The Bible tells us that he who isolates himself gives himself over to all kinds of vanity and lack of wisdom. And we didn't isolate ourselves, but the enemy tried to isolate us and put us in. And, and don't touch. You know, the Bible says that you, 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 you lay hands on the sick. You know, I just believe this coronavirus thing is going to go away in Jesus' name. I'm just going to say, I don't, it's going to taper off and go away. And I'm looking forward to the people of God coming back together and being in the house so where we can shake hands and those that are, that are our great friends, they can hug each other and we can give high fives and fist bumps, however it is, but we are meant to be united. Amen. Amen. So let's just practice the Spirit in spite of what the, the enemy tries to do. We'll override it, and we're just going to come through this thing in a supernatural way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Excited about today. And I just want to encourage you as you're sitting in your homes, worship God, love Him. Let's just make this an amazing Easter. Amen. Amen. Amazing Easter. I, I've been talking with some preacher friends. I'm, I'm always on the phone with good friends, preacher friends, servants of the Lord. Uh, we've been doing these things uh, with, with our phone and texting, and I encourage you, stay in contact with people. Don't let yourself get isolated because the devil will try to mug you and beat you up. But in some of my conversation with my preacher friends is that the... the uh, virus infection thing isn't as big on their mind as their economics and this is a big deal in our nation our president is have been mentioning these things and and i believe that we're going to come through this in a grand way but while we're in this place we have to know how to fight the good fights of faith and one of the ways that we do that is we stay engaged by giving uh, there's a, a a segment of a, a book aged old book it came from uh, a Chinese warrior, and it's called The Art of War. And one of the ways that The Art of War uh, uh, guidelines was to divide and conquer. And if the enemy can separate us and get us disjointed and, and, and move in our own ways, then, then he will try to conquer us. But I'm telling you, we're stronger together. And we need to stay together in our giving. Um, one pastor I talked to, when the first... Uh, Sunday came that there was no um, uh, there was no service for people and it was the first Sunday where we were isolated and no church congregation and that pastor told me that his giving went down 75 percent the church well giving to the to uh, the the people uh, the food ministry and helping people and things you know we need the currency God didn't say I'll bless you if the economy's good he says, I will bless you because I have riches and glory, and I will meet your needs. So we need to believe that, that your, your tithe and your offering activates God in your life, regardless of what nation you live in or what economy says uh, around you. We're living in, in powerful times. Let's, let's believe what we've been taught and apply that. Don't pull back on your giving. God loves the cheerful giver so I encourage you uh, as miss sandy prompted on your giving follow those things and, and and keep you know the your giving is a defense it's a shield against the devil that he can't enter in and steal from you so i'm going to pray right now and we say something after it uh, i believe that when you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth you have what you say it's a jesus principle so god today i just pray for friends I just pray, Lord, today for our families, our church, our churches that are connected with us, that you would bless them. No matter what the world says, no matter what the world may do, that, Lord God, we are immune to its currency because, God, you meet our needs according to your riches and glory. We thank you, Lord, for all of your help and all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Say this with me. Father God, open up the windows of heaven. Pour out your blessing so great we can't receive it all. And the devourers rebuke. My barns are filled. My vats overflow because I'm a cheerful giver. Every earthly blessing comes to me in abundance. I'm able to give unto every good work in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. Amen.
Well, you know, we have uh, uh, come up with a way in the live streaming world to have a connect with some of the co-workers, some of the peers, some of the leaders in our lives. We've had Joe Purcell from Singapore. We've had Dave McGrew last week. And we're blessed to have Tony Cook with us uh, uh, and, and part of our, of our service today. He's going to share with about about the, the Passover and about communion. You know, Americans didn't create um, uh, the communion. You know, the Catholic Church, the Baptists, the Pentecostals, they did not create communion. You know, really, it started before Jesus was uh, uh, crucified in Jerusalem. It started way back at when God got Israel out of uh, Egypt. And they had the, the lamb inside the house, the blood on the doorpost, and the death angel passed over the house. You know, that's when it started, and it went through all those generations, those hundreds and thousands of years, till Jesus came, and he was the Passover lamb. It did some things in our lives. Today, we have the, the, the Passover celebration, the communion elements, and I'll talk to you a little bit uh, when we consume or take them together as two compartments to it. So don't take it yet. We're going to take it together as the body of Christ. But as Tony comes and, and, and just, we, we have a conversation with him this morning. You know, he's a mentor. He's a leader. He's a good friend of our church. Maybe he's been the, the uh, most prolific speaker in our church over the years. He's been here many times. And we talk twice or three times a week. We text each other. He's such a great cheerleader. He not only does that for our church, but he's all across the nation, all across the world. He knows ministries all over the place. He used to be, and formerly, the dean at Rama, and then God sent him on to the field to, to, uh, to be a part of touching other lives in church. We went with him, Linda and I, on, on a journey. You, some of our church people helped me to go on that to Paul's journeys in Rome and through all the different Antioch and, and the different locations Paul went. It was one of the most rewarding trips that we have been on, and we're just thankful for Brother Tony uh, uh, leading those things and being a voice. So if we can bring Tony up uh, on the screen this morning, we want to welcome him. And there he is, Brother Tony. So if everybody would applause at home, you can do that. We're grateful for Do Brother Tony to being with us. So greet everybody this morning, if you would, Tony. Pastor Rick, good morning. And Miss Linda, it is so good to see you guys. And Lisa and I are here. We've enjoyed your worship. We even enjoyed the announcements and the offering. Uh, you guys are doing such a great job. And Pastor Rick, I've said this every time I've been with you, and I absolutely don't say this with any insincerity or flattery in mind, uh, but your people, the people of Spokane Christian Center, are so blessed to have you and Linda at the helm of this uh, ship. You guys, um, I'm gonna call you admirals after this for navigating the, the good ship, Spokane Christian Center, uh, through this Praise time. But, You're very uh, gracious, thank you. We Brother so Tony. appreciate you and your leadership. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're, you, you know, you're our friend and for your gracious words, I'm thankful for that. Um, you know, in this time, you know, one of the reasons that we have you is because it's a unique time, and we, un when you have unique times, you need unique measures. So I want to just um, ask you here, hang on just a second, we're getting things set up here. So um, in your activity, connections with people, uh, what have you seen during this, this change, this virus, this this these elements that are going. What, what are other churches uh, facing? What are they dealing with? How are, how are they handling all the things that's going on? That's a wonderful question. I've, I've had the privilege of being in communication with pastors and not only all over the states, but in many different countries throughout this situation. And um, some countries are dealing with it very different than here in the States. I have one friend who pastors in a country where the government has said, if you're out on the streets, we'll shoot you. Wow. And, um, you know, but everybody everywhere has had to make adjustments. And I am so pleased with the 
uh, with the pastors who have realized this does not change our mission one bit. Uh, the message is still the same. We may, have, we may make some modifications in how we do things, but um, just like what you guys are doing with your, with your online ministry, uh, calling people on the phone, uh, what you're doing with your children and your youth, uh, it's, it's really been amazing in many churches. I have a pastor friend in Munich, Germany, who said that their influence uh, has increased fourfold during this time. Wow. They're reaching four times as many people than when they were meeting in their church building. And the church is, is not a building. The church is a people. And we love the building because it's a place where we meet and fellowship. But the church is so much bigger than just the building itself. When we get a chance to get back together in the building, it's going to be wonderful. But in the meantime, the mission is going on just the same. Uh, making disciples of all nations, preaching the gospel to every creature. Uh, none of that changes one bit. One thing, Pastor Rick, that I, I've heard from a lot of pastors is how much they are missing their people. Um, you know, and it's nothing new. John in the in the New Testament, John wrote a letter, and he told the people he was writing the letter to. This is in Second John. He said, "I have many things to say to you, but I don't want to put them on paper. I want to see you face to face." And so, pastors are eager to see their people. You know, hug their necks and and. Um, be back together in the way we're used to. But as we move through this, we've had to make some changes, but good things are still coming. And I agree with you 100%. Uh, we've got great, great days ahead. Uh, this is not a time to, uh, you know, recoil in fear. Uh, we're using wisdom about some things, but, uh, but we, we believe the future is bright. Well, you know, one thing that, that I am contacting, it's, it's the circumstances that we have. I've talked to um, some of our missionaries. We support missionaries and outreaches and people that are, that are you know, God connected us with. And I talked to a few of them this week, and uh, a few of them said that churches and people that have been supporting them uh, have pulled out of their support. They say during this current situation, we're, we're dropping our giving. And, and I'm saying, I, to me, that grieved my spirit, that world outreach, Jesus said, go into the uttermost, Judea, Samaria, in the uttermost parts. He didn't say it if you could afford it. He didn't say support them if your money was good. He said that you give unto every good work. So right. that's a high priority to me. It's a high priority to us to stay engaged, just keep giving food to keep giving help to people that are in need, and to keep supporting our missionaries. Because I, I think of like yourself, I think of like um, just different ones that, you know, we are a big part of what sustains them in, in, on, on the field. So people's giving and engaging and believing God in these times, that they're not going to get sick, believe in God that they're not going to be overcome, believe in God the coronavirus is not bigger than the Lord, but believe in God, he's going to meet their needs and we can support missionaries. Like Paul said for the Philippians, my God's going to meet your needs because you gave into my life. Praise the and Lord. Pastor Rick, Pastor Rick, yes. I just want to say we can personally testify to the generosity of Spokane Christian Center. And again, you and Miss Linda have, have been leaders in that. Uh, but I just want to say to all the church folks, um, Past, what Pastor Rick is saying is 100% true. Um, this is just as, uh, as an important time, if not more important time, to be generous and to honor God. And God, you know, David said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Right. And so you all are, be, are to be commended for all the generosity you've shown over the years and your heart to continue that generosity even now. We Praise. thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that. But, you know, we just, we just want to see the kingdom of God work and not have a theory, but have it work in real time and every day. 
So we, we do that by living in the power and the life that God put inside of us. And today in, in our, our service, uh, we've, we've just had an, a pull, an urgency to receive communion. And communion is never meant to be a ritual, that we don't have any idea what's going, just a, a, a mindless. I'm telling you, this communion elements, if you have it at home, we have given to our, our people. We sent some out to people. And in, in this is, is a self-contained, purified, uh, sanitary uh, component uh, about the blood of Jesus and the broken body of Christ. Well, there's two compartments. One holds the wafer. One uh, opens up for the symbol of the blood of Jesus or the grape juice. So hold those and, and we'll, we'll open them. But Tony is going to share with us about the power of communion. Communion is like you taking Jesus into your innermost being. It symbols, typifies that when you receive Christ, he puts things inside of you. Old things are passed away and all things become new. It's powerful. And if you live in the power of that, it'll change your life and it'll cause you to override any circumstance. So Tony, share with us today a little bit of your insight, your foresight. You're a wise man. You teach all over the world. And, and we're so glad to have you as a leader and a, a voice in our church. So would you share some things about the communion elements today? Absolutely, Pastor Rick. Thank you. Pastor Rick, you just used a word a minute ago, symbols. And, and that's what people have either on their table or like you holding it in their hands right now. And these symbols, when I think of a symbol, I think of something like the American flag. Uh, we were in Washington, D.C. last fall, and in one of the museums, we saw the actual flag that flew over, I think it was Fort McHenry, uh, when Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Hmm. And I'm, I'm patriotic. I love my nation very much. And when we look at that flag, it, it enables us to focus on all of the principles and all of the values that went into the founding of our nation. And when we hold the communion elements in our hands and partake of them, it enables us to focus on everything that went into our redemption. And so as we talk about communion today, I wanna to talk really about our focus. And I wanna specifically talk about the issue of what are we looking at? Because in a time like this, there are so many voices that are clamoring for our attention. Some people are listening to voices of fear, voices of panic, things of that nature. And whatever we look at is what will be magnified in our life and in our heart. Jesus talked about in Luke chapter 21, he talked about a time, he was talking about end times. And he said that men's hearts will be failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. That's Luke 21, 26 in the King James, that men's hearts will be failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. When you look after fearful things, it will magnify fear in your life. And we're not oblivious to the realities of challenges in life, but we, we choose as believers, we choose to look at and we choose to focus not just on something else, but we choose to focus on someone else. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So we want to do that today as we get ready to partake of communion. We want to look unto Jesus. Uh, Jesus is not worried about the future, our future. Uh, we are in wonderful hands with him. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same Jesus who rose from the dead, which is what we're celebrating today, the same Jesus who rose from the dead and conquered death, hell, and the grave, he is still reigning 
in life and in heaven, and he is reigning in our hearts. So we look to Jesus today. We don't look at the fearful things that might be coming, that might not be coming. We're looking to Jesus and I want to share five very simple, very quick little principles from 1 Corinthians 11, because this is taking us into the communion that we'll be celebrating in just a moment. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, when Paul teaches on what we call communion, partaking of the Lord's table, Paul really points out five different things for us to look at that that we don't just have the symbol in our hands, but the symbols of, of the bread and the juice cause us to look at, at powerful meaning uh, within and, and things that are conveyed through the communion. For example, in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, Paul says, for I received from the Lord. I received of the Lord or from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. So when Paul says, I received from the Lord, you know what it does? It causes us to look upward. Communion is not my idea. Communion is not Pastor Rick's idea. Communion is not some church denomination idea. It, it was from the Lord. The Lord instituted it. And so when we look upward, we see that this comes from heaven. This celebration, uh, God ordained that we use these symbols to look upward to the blessings and the provision of God. Everything that we celebrate today through the avenue of these symbols, whether it's forgiveness, healing, peace, uh, faith, everything that we receive is from the Lord. So the first thing we do when we think of communion, when we think of Jesus, is we think uh, and we look upward. Secondly, communion invites us to look backward. Why do we look backward? Because in verses 24 and 25, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance. So we're, we're not only looking upward because this is from the Lord, but we're also looking backward because we are remembering something. Uh, I think it was uh, Friday night, Lisa and I watched The Passion of the Christ the movie um, where the, the beatings and the whippings and the crucifixion, the suffering of Jesus is so vividly portrayed. And honestly, it's a little bit hard to watch, but, but we remember what Jesus did for us. We do this in remembrance of him. See, our faith is not based on, Pastor Rick used the term a little a bit ago about a theory or a concept, something like that. Our faith is not based on a theory, as you also indicated. Our faith is rooted in historical fact. Jesus came, Jesus lived, Jesus died, and Jesus rose again. So we do this in remembrance of him. Everything that he is and everything that he did, that's what we're remembering right now. Here's another thing. When we partake of communion, communion invites us to look forward, invites us to look forward into the future. What are we looking for? Doom and gloom and despair? No. Paul said in verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. So really what we're doing today as a church family is that we are prophesying through these symbols. When we partake of these symbols, we're not just looking upward 
And we're not just looking backward, but we're looking forward. We're proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. Just as certainly as he came in the past, he will come in the future. And when he comes, it is going to be glorious beyond measure. That's why, that's why we're not given to despair, despondency. Uh, we don't have a doom and gloom outlook on the future. Our future is bright because Jesus is in our future. So we're looking forward as well. Number four, communion invites us to look inward. Uh, verse 28 says in 1 Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight 28 says, but let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So we take a look inward right now. Unfortunately, many people, when they think about looking inward, all they think about is, oh, I'm going to think about all my mistakes, everything I've ever done wrong, and things of that nature. And we, we make ourselves feel so guilty that we don't even think we can take communion. But that's not what Paul was getting at. Of course, if there's something in our life that we need to acknowledge and receive God's forgiveness for, and that type of thing. Yeah, let's do that. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Uh, this teaching is not so that we can feel so guilty we don't take communion. This, this inward introspection is just to make sure that we're in the best position to walk cleanly and purely before the Lord. If, if, our, if our past sins disqualified us from communion, then hey, none of us should be taking communion. But we're taking communion to celebrate the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then number five, and this one is really important. People don't think about this one as much. Communion invites us to look outward. Paul said in verse 33, therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry for one another, wait for one another. See, communion, there's nothing wrong if somebody takes communion privately. That's wonderful. You know, uh, it's a good thing to do. But really what Paul was talking about here was that when we take communion as a family, we're all one in the body of Christ. And this is really part of what Paul was saying, examine yourself and wait for one another. Because what was happening in the Corinthian church is that people from real high class society were getting to church early and they were having a big feast and then when the poor people got off work and came to church, uh, there was no food left for them. And Paul was saying, hey, when you partake as a fellowship, that, that is not the time to discriminate against one another. Paul understood there were different social classes in society. But when we come to the Lord's table, nobody's better than anybody else. Nobody's inferior to anybody else. We are all people who were sinners, all people who needed the mercy and forgiveness of God. And we are all people who have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. So at this table, we are 100% equal. So we wait for one another, we honor one another, we even look out for the weaker and the more vulnerable among us. So at this, at this particular communion table, we are, we're looking upward. Why? Because we receive this from God, just like we receive every blessing from heaven. Number two, we look backward. Why? Because we're remembering what Jesus did for us. We're celebrating everything that he produced and created and wrought, made available to us. We're looking forward. We're looking inward. And, and we're looking outward. We're looking out for one another. And we're celebrating the fact 
that we are brothers and we are sisters in Christ and we honor and we celebrate one another as we come to the Lord's table. Fascinating. Wonderful. That was tremendous teaching, Tony. Thank you for sharing that with us today. You know, we're, we're going to consume the communion elements. You know, we, we gave as many as we, we could get, get them to. And if you have them in your hands, there's, there's uh, two compartments on it. And so the top one, let's take the top one. It's the cellophane. It's the clear one. Uh, let's take that off. Not the foil one. Um, the foil one contains the, this one doesn't have a handle on it, anybody. I need not. Thank you. I'm not either a mechanic or the thing broke. Anyway, if, if you would take that, let's take the bread element, keep this foil part on. You know, we're, we're going to receive and, and consume the communion elements. I just believe that there's power in this. You know, the Bible says, Jesus said, I will come and make my abode or my dwelling place inside of you. We're reminding ourselves of what he did, where we're going, and, and where, he, where he came from, where we've been, where we're going. He's in us, and because he's in us, we can go outward with it. It's a power, uh, a power display that Christ in us, the hope of glory. We're going to consume him and remind us that he lives on the inside of us. For you to help somebody else, he's given you power. You don't do it on your own strength. You know, we don't face the things in front of us because we have willpower. It's, we face these things in front of us because we have God power, and he lives inside. I will give you power after the Holy Ghost comes inside you. As we would take these elements today, you know, we're reminding ourselves of these things. And you know, personally, he took care of sickness. If you got ailments in your body with his stripes, you were healed. This emblem was the body that those stripes were put upon. You know, we get used to, okay, I, I just got uh, high blood pressure medication. You know what? I believe he can take care of blood pressure medication because your blood pressure is normal. I believe in miracles. It's a point of contact. When people touched his hem of his garment, the uh, blood issues were taken care of in that, that woman. I believe we're doing more than touching the hem of his gar garment. We are putting him inside of us. He says, remember me. We're remembering this today. So what we do is, I, I, I just pray. I pray over you right now. If there's sickness in your body, there's ailments in your body, if there's things in your outside world that you just feel, this is not God. You know, Christ paid the price so that we would be free from sin, free from the curse, free from the, the strategies of the devil. So moms and dads, if you've got these for your kids, we, we believe kids can and should take the communion elements. You don't wait for revelation knowledge for this. You come to the cross just as you are. So if you have that element in your hand, I want you to just grip it right now like you're holding Jesus, like you're hugging Jesus today. And Jesus, I pray for this audience. I pray for the people at home. I pray for people that are in other states, other places. I know, I know, Father God, you love them all. And you just don't want them to be religious. You want them to be electrified with your anointing and with your power. And we receive that today that you are the healer of the spirit, soul, and the body. And we just acknowledge you, Lord. We receive you today, Lord, that you're a healer of our life. So close your eyes and say this with me. Father God, I submit myself to you that you gave me a treasure and a gift when you sent Jesus. And I'm receiving you fresh and new as Lord and Savior and healer and deliverer in my life. Jesus, you are Lord, and allow you to be lording over me in everything. In Jesus' name. Let's partake of the broken body of Christ. Just praise him for a moment. Thank you, Lord. I'm healed and I'm whole. Every part of my body responds. 
You give me strength. You, you strengthen my willpower to say yes to you and no to this world. My body's not in control. You are. You quicken my mortal body by you that dwell on the inside of me. I thank you for my healing, Lord. I thank you for my healing. Thank you for my deliverance, Lord. With long life, do you satisfy me? Show me your salvation. Holy Spirit, I just know you're touching lives right now. You're filling homes that they sense, they know, they feel your presence around them. Right now. Right now. Let's take the emblem, the symbol of the blood of Jesus and slide that open. Careful you don't spill. You know, the Bible talks extensively about the power of the blood. Starts in Genesis and goes all the way through to the Revelation. The blood is power. That's what they put on the doorpost. The lamb was on the inside. We just consumed the lamb. And now we're putting the, the blood of Jesus in our lives. Death angels have to pass over. The curse has to pass over. Attacks have to, uh, will bow their knee to Jesus. When you use the name of Jesus, his blood is behind it. And it satisfied the courts of eternity. Jesus took his blood into the heavenly holy of holies. And he put it on the mercy seat, the shadow, right in front of the Father. And he says, that, that blood washes away all sin. You know, the devil's tool is guilt. It's a motivator for people to back away, to pull away from the good things of God. Today, we're going to consume, take inside of us the essence of his delivering blood today. The blood has never lost its power, never will, and we remind ourselves. So God, today I pray over these elements, over, these, over our families, that the Lord, as we apply the blood, as we put that blood on the inside of us, the symbol of this grape juice is the blood of Jesus, and it washes away all sin and all guilt and all shame, and it causes us to have a brand new day. This is the day that you have made. From this step forward, Lord, we walk with a confidence about the blood of Jesus. So at home, just say this with me. Father God, you sent Jesus, and he shed his blood for my redemption, for my justification, for my freedom. Your stripes I'm healed, and with your blood I am washed, and I'm cleansed. I have eternal security in Jesus' name. Let's consume the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now let's just praise Him for a moment. God, I thank you. I thank you for helping us. God, I just thank you right now. Now somebody's at home right now. I just, I just believe that your presence is in them. Your presence is around them. Your presence is behind them. It's in front of them. It's above them, and Lord, it's in them, and it's coming out of them. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are redeeming them today. And if, Father, if somebody at home has not, not made that statement, Jesus, be Lord of my life, I pray that that would take place in their life. I want everybody to say this. Even if you know Jesus is Lord, maybe somebody, maybe a young person, maybe somebody that's a family member that's listening for the first time, I want all of us to say this, just a simple, short prayer, inviting Jesus to change their life and come into their heart. So, Father God, I receive Jesus today. His work on the cross, where his body was beat and his blood came out for my redemption. I receive his sacrifice and I receive new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, if something happened in your life, you sensed, you picked up, you felt the power of God in your life, call into the church. You know, leave, if, if somebody happened to not be on the phone this moment, uh, leave a recording there. We pick them up all the time, and, and we follow those. We want to know about this. We want to get acquainted with you. If you don't have a church home, Spokane Christian Center wants to be your church home. I want to be your pastor. We want to be leaders in your life. Thank you for joining us today. We're grateful for all that you have done. I appreciate Brother Tony. 
Um, I don't know if he's still there or not, is he? Do you, you want to say a, a goodbye to everybody, Brother Tony? I will, Pastor Rick. It has been such an absolute joy to be with you. Lisa and I have loved this time. Uh, I don't say this flippantly, but, but Spokane Christian Center is like a home away from home to us. And so to be able to join you today has been very, very special. Thank you. Well, thank you, Brother Tony. And you are special to us. And I know you have friends all over the world. I don't know of anybody that Tony and Lisa do not express graciousness. They're great hosts on, on things. And we love having them be a part of our church. Listen, we're, we're going to uh, step forward on doing some live streaming on Wednesday night, just a short time. Uh, we're we're going to make some attempt to come into your home and just for a short time to bump up, stir things up in your hearts and your lives. Uh, and, and so uh, if you have questions about that, call in the church and we'll, we'll hook you up with all of that. Uh, next week, we have a, another guest. Uh, his name is Joe Hernandez. Joe is a missionary we support and he is um, going, uh, he's uh, pastors and started a church in Dubai. Imagine that. It's illegal in some sense to have a church but i'm telling you he's bold and and he's doing some incredible things in dubai we support him and we're grateful for for um uh, our our connection with him he's going to share next week with us on on live stream the week after that rick renner is going to be sharing with us the same kind of thing going to speak things from what from a world platform we have great friends the week after that third, third week out uh, Charlie Milbro, our missionary, has got a profound work in uh, um, Thailand. He's going to be uh, sharing with us. So the things that we've got going, I'm telling you, they're, they're not small. They're, they're not boring. They are electric, and they are current with what's going on around the world. What a time. What the enemy meant for evil, we're turning this thing around to the, to the good. It's going to make us all better people, and we're going to be stronger coming out of this thing than when we went in. Let me pray with you as we're done today. God, we come before you today and just thank you for the glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. We just pray blessings on every home, every life, every family. Lord, you quicken us by the spirit that dwells within us. And that, Lord, that we walk upon serpents and scorpions and viruses and all the works of the enemy. You're going to meet every need. Our supply is full and we're going to be able to give unto every good work in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us. We're saying goodbye for this moment. God bless you all. Some materials we would like to give you that will help you grow in your relationship with the Lord and to just be a blessing to you. Or if you need prayer for any reason, we have a great team of people that will join you with faith-filled prayers. You can contact us at info at sec-spokane.org. Thank you again for joining us for our service today. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next week.